Hey YouTube, sorry I haven't recorded last week for week eight, but I've just been having really bad morning sickness. And I thought it was, I thought I like beat it or whatever because with Giselle, my first baby, I didn't, I've, I started having it at week six. And now I've like got week six, I was feeling okay. It's just last week, week eight, I started feeling really bad. And continue on to this week, which is week nine. I turned week nine yesterday, so. This will be my week 8 and week 9 video. My cough is still really bad too. <clears throat> so the morning sickness is pretty much all day. Um, I think it was yesterday or the day before. It was only in the really in the morning. But most of the time it's all day. But I haven't really been throwing up. I threw up like a handful of times. But usually it's just like general nauseated feeling. And I'm always like, I'm always hungry. Yeah, I'm always hungry. Like sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and just be starving and I'll wake up at night time like at 3 o'clock in the morning and just like intense hunger pains and I saw the midwife two days ago on Wednesday and I really like her she's really into um like all this beliefs that I'm into it seems like we kind of like complement each other like she's um on board with everything I want like the I don't want the erythromycin ointment and she said we can talk further about the oral vitamin K. Maybe she just has to look into it or something. And she's also into like low intervention for normal healthy babies, which I love. And she said she's more of like an observer and she'll stand back and observe and like step in when she's needed, which is what I wanted. And, sorry. <laughs> and last with Giselle. I had a midwife and two of her students, and I, I don't mind students, but with this this time, it's like with the birth of Giselle, the students kind of took over, which I didn't like because they relied more on like what they learned in school rather than what they learned in real life like type of thing. Like With the midwife I have this time, she's been a midwife since like, the 80s or early 90s, so she has like loads of experience, and she's also... Um, into like the political side of things where she's with like she's a former president of the Ontario Association uh, Ontario College of Midwives and the current vice president for um, like the Association of Midwives of Ontario so she's really into like the political aspects as well as like advocating for women and babies and she has loads of experience which is what I was looking for and Giselle has been so excited she came with us to the initial visit and she loved it there, and she says every day, she's like, I want to go to the, see the baby doctor. <laughs> I'm trying to teach her to say midwife, but she still calls her baby doctor. And she calls the clinic the baby hospital. I think she's actually a bit disappointed, because I think she thought that we were going to get the baby at the midwife clinic. But then she was really upset when we left, maybe because we didn't have a baby with us. But I've been trying to explain to her, like, the baby's growing in my stomach. And we've got, like, different books from the library of, like... Um, you know, like books like, now you're going to become a big sister type of thing. So she kind of seems like she's understanding it, but not fully. And she even says, I have a baby in my tummy too. <laughs> so cute. But she's really excited about it, and she, she talks about it every day, so I can tell she's happy from whatever extent she has an understanding of. Um, other symptoms. My breasts have been, like, really, really sore, especially when Giselle breastfeeds. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but even, like, the nipple is just, every time she latches on, it's just, like, reminds, at least this week, it's reminding me of, like, the first week of nursing with Giselle. Like, it just, I, like, scream silently on the inside every time she latches on, especially on one side versus the other. I guess one is more sensitive. I'm just wondering if that goes away, or is it always going to be like that? What's, maybe if you guys have some experience with nursing while pregnant, with you can share that with me or anything that would help I was thinking of buying like um the nipple ointment thing that you buy like when you're first starting to breastfeed like there's no like open blisters or bleeding it just feels like a big bruise or something like, it really hurts other symptoms it's still like pretty much the same actually I'm a bit more stuffy now my nose is really stuffy am I cold like the cough I had kind of got better and then now it's turned into a cold so maybe I'm just gotta have a cold on top of what I had before. I don't know. It's been like two months now with this cough. It's so annoying. Other symptoms. 
fatigue still and a shortness of breath. And my stomach, every time I eat something, my stomach is huge. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's going to be huge when I show you guys, but yesterday me and Tommy went out to dinner with some of, some of his friends and like by the end of the night my stomach was like, it looked like I was like five months pregnant. It was crazy. <coughs> Especially if I just eat and then have to go pee or something, it's just like, I guess, just pushes everything out. So now that I'm week nine, the baby's only the size of an olive, which is one inch long. And it's making some movements. And by week nine, I was reading that the heartbeat could be detected by ultrasound. And with the movements, I kind of feel like I feel the movements, even though it's so early, but it doesn't feel like gas and it's so low, like where my uterus is. It feels like just like tiny flutters. Which I guess maybe could be gas, but I don't think it's gas. I just think it might be gas because of what I'm reading. Reading, it says that, like, you can't feel it this early. But this is my second pregnancy, and like, I don't feel like this when I'm not pregnant. So I think it's the baby. And, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I've decided that I only want to get one ultrasound if... Like, everything goes as normal, and that will be, like, the biophysical profile. And I don't even necessarily want to get that. I'm just getting it because, well, I guess, to satisfy people. Like, I'm pretty sure the midwife would want at least one ultrasound. And Tommy wants an ultrasound, but ideally I wouldn't want any. But I guess I'll just get one. And I just don't want any because of research I've been reading about ultrasounds and the like sound waves that are sent and interference with like development and stuff because it hasn't really been studied that intensely intensively like the long-term effects of it but I don't know I remember with Giselle I had so many because my fundal height was measuring low but I mean like I'm a skinny person to begin with so obviously I'm not I'm gonna measure lower than the average like weight person and each week I was still progressively growing bigger so like, I, don't, I think that's really unnecessary to have an ultrasound, like, every week. So I guess I'll go ahead and show you guys my nine-week pregnant belly with baby number two. Here's with the shirt. It's pretty big. Well, this is, like, normal. It gets bigger, like, after I eat. I think it's definitely looking like, well, I guess still, like, can't really tell. I can tell. Like, it looks definitely different from how my body usually is. I don't have this. But to the average person walking on the street, I guess I just think I have a big stomach. Okay, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys next week for week 10. Bye.